economic crisis. Our objective in asking Congress for a financial rescue package were to first stabilize the financial system on the verge of collapse and then to get lending going again to support American consumers and businesses. Over the next few weeks, conditions worsened significantly. Confidence in the banking system continued to diminish. Industrial company access to all aspects of the bond market was dramatically curtailed. Small and middle-sized companies with no direct connection to the financial sector were losing access to the normal credit needed to meet payrolls, pay suppliers, and buy inventory. During that same period, the FDIC acted to mitigate the failure of Washington Mutual and made clear that it would intervene to prevent Wachovia's failure. Turmoil had developed in European markets. In a two-day period at the end of September, the governments of Ireland, the UK, Germany, Belgium, France, and Iceland intervened to prevent the failure of one or more financial institutions in their countries. By the time legislation had cleared Congress, the global market crisis was so broad and severe, powerful steps were necessary quickly to stabilize our financial system. Our response, in coordination with the Federal Reserve, the FDIC, and other banking regulators, was a program to purchase equity in banks across the country. We have committed $250 billion to this effort. This action, in combination with the FDIC's guarantee of certain debt issued by financial institutions and the Fed's commercial paper program, helped us to immediately stabilize the financial system. The capital purchase program for banks and thrifts has already dispersed $148 billion, and we are processing many more applications. Yesterday, Treasury announced the terms for participation for non-publicly traded banks, another important source of credit in our economy. We have designed these terms to help provide community development financial institutions and minority depository institutions with capital for lending to low-income and minority populations. These institutions have committed to use this capital for businesses and projects that serve their communities. In addition, we are developing a matching program for possible future use by banks or non-bank financial institutions. Capital strength enables banks to take losses as they write down or sell troubled assets. Stronger capitalization is also essential to increasing lending, which although difficult to achieve during times like this, is essential to economic recovery. We expect banks to increase their lending over time as a result of these efforts and as confidence is restored. This lending won't materialize as fast as any of us would like, but it will happen much, much faster, having used the TARP to stabilize our system. As we continued significant work on our mortgage asset purchase plan, it became clear just how much damage the crisis had done to our economy. Third quarter GDP growth showed negative three, point, three tenths of a percent. The unemployment rate rose to a level not seen in 15 years. Home price data showed that home prices in 10 major cities had fallen 18 percent over the previous year, demonstrating that the housing correction had not abated. The slowing of European economies has been even more dramatic. We assessed the potential use of remaining TARP funding against the backdrop of current economic and market conditions. It is clear that an effective mortgage asset purchase program would require a massive commitment of TARP funds. In September, before economic conditions worsened, $700 billion in troubled asset purchases would have had a significant impact. But half of that sum in a worse economy simply isn't enough firepower. We have therefore determined that the prudent course at this time is to conserve the remaining funds available from the TARP, providing flexibility for this and the next administration. Other priorities that need to be addressed include actions to restore consumer credit. Treasury has been working on a program with the Federal Reserve 
to improve securitization in the credit marketplace. While this would involve investing only a relatively modest share of TARP funds in a Federal Reserve liquidity facility, it could have substantial positive benefits for consumer lending. Finally, Mr. Chairman, Treasury remains committed to continuing to work to reduce avoidable foreclosures. Congress and the administration have made substantial progress on that front through HUD programs, the FDIC's IndyMac approach, our support and leadership of the Hope Now Alliance and our work with the GSEs, including an important announcement they made last week, establishing new servicer guidelines that will set a new standard for the entire industry. Our actions to stabilize and strengthen Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac have also helped mitigate the housing correction by increasing access to lower cost mortgage lending. As some on the committee know, I have reservations about spending TARP resources to directly subsidize foreclosure mitigation because this is different than the original investment intent. We continue to look at good proposals and are dedicated to implementing those that protect the taxpayer and work well. Mr. Chairman, the, access, excuse me, the actions of the Treasury, the Fed, and the FDIC have stabilized our financial system. The authorities and the TARP have been used to strengthen our financial system and to prevent the harm to our economy and financial system from the failure of a systemically important institution. As facts and conditions in the market and economy have changed, we have adjusted our strategy to most effectively address the urgent crisis and to preserve the flexibility of the President-elect and the new Secretary of the Treasury to address future challenges in the economy and capital markets. Thank you again for your efforts and for the opportunity to appear today. I would like to just make one last comment in response to uh, a question that, that uh, Congressman Backus asked, because it's one I hear a lot of. The, the distinction between the financial markets and the economy. So when we've talked about the, the crisis in the financial markets and being unprecedented and having to go back to the Great Depression to see anything of this magnitude and that presented this amount of difficulty, we're talking about the financial markets. Now, when the financial markets have problems, they hurt the economy. So the reason that it was very important to get in quickly and stabilize was to mitigate damage to the economy. When we were here before you, we saw what was happening to the economy. We talked about it. We took the steps. The economy has continued to get worse. The American people look at the worsening economy. And as your chairman said to me yesterday, in politics, you don't get much credit for what might have happened and didn't happen. What the American people see is what's happening to the economy. But again, our purpose in coming to you was to take uh, the Mr. Steps Secretary, to protect the capital market. The okay. gentleman will have his five minutes. Appreciate that. The, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Chairman Frank, Ranking Member Bacchus, and other members of the committee, I appreciate having this opportunity to review some of the activities to date of the Treasury's Troubled Asset Relief Program, or TARP, and to discuss recent steps taken by the Federal Reserve and other agencies to support the normalization of credit markets. The legislation that created the TARP put in place a Financial Stability Oversight Board to review the actions of the Treasury in administering the program. That oversight board includes the Secretary of the Treasury, the Secretary of Housing and Urban Development, the Chairman of the Securities and Exchange Commission, the Director of the Federal Housing Finance Agency, and the Chairman of the Federal Reserve Board. We have met four times reviewing the operational plans and policy initiatives for the TARP and discussing possible additional steps that might be taken. Officers for the Oversight Board have been appointed, and the Federal Reserve and other agencies are providing staff support for the Board. Minutes of each meeting are being posted to a special website established by the Treasury. In addition, staff members of the agencies whose heads are participating in the Oversight Board have met with staff from the Government Accountability Office to explore strategies for coordinating the oversight that the two bodies are required to perform under the enabling legislation. The value of the TARP in promoting financial stability has already been demonstrated. The financial crisis intensified greatly in the latter